Hey, so there have been a lot of questions lately on the Facebook page about weight loss stalls and how to best jumpstart a weight loss stall after surgery. And so I wanted to kind of go into that a little bit more detail. I've, I've maybe done a video post on this before, I can't remember. Um, but obviously you guys have read my comments. And so I wanted to get a little bit more into that, into the, the science behind it, or or really the lack thereof, <laughs> um, it's more specifically, because there's not an exact prescription for, you know, when you have a weight loss stall, this is what you do to, to start it or to jumpstart it. Um, and so that can make it really, really difficult. And so, you know, after doing weight loss surgery and working in this world and, uh, and just weight loss in general, there are some things that I have learned. And so I want to kind of just go into that a little bit more specifically. So a big thing that people will always tell others to do is, oh, you know, go back to the clear liquids. That will do a reset and reset your pouch and make you feel like everything's small again. And while, yes, you may lose some weight doing that, what really happens is when you go back to clear liquids or do kind of a, a juice cleanse of some kind, you're obviously you're drinking just a lot of fluids and so there's a lot of calories you're not consuming so yes you will have you know some weight loss just because of that decrease in the calories but also what happens is you're not taking in as many nutrients specifically sodium and sodium tends to kind of get demonized because as americans we just tend to get a lot more of them than what we really need but one of the main functions of sodium is to act as kind of a regulator for the fluid balance in our bodies. And so the more sodium you take in, the more water you hold on to. So you know, if you probably witnessed this, if you've had like a honey baked ham or a lot of popcorn or something, you're really thirsty for the next few hours. So you'll wake up in the middle of the night kind of parched. And so you'll start, you know, guzzling water. And so, you know, the more sodium you have, the more water you have. So as you take sodium out of your diet, which happens a lot with the, the pre-surgery diet, the liver shrink diet, when you're not eating as much, or when you do any kind of clear liquid diet is you decrease your sodium and then you also will eliminate more fluid. So you'll urinate more a lot. You might not even notice that. You also probably won't be as, as thirsty necessarily. So that's one reason why you're having some weight loss with that. The other part of it is when you decrease your calories so much, you're also lowering your metabolism. So your body may have been used to running at 1200 calories after surgery. And then when you do one of these kind of you know reset clear liquid diets, you go down to maybe 800 or 700. And so if there's one thing our body is really good at, it's adapting. And so it can run off of you know, whatever calorie lever you bring it down to. Now it might not run as well, you might be really tired, you might be sluggish, but it can do it. And then essentially all you're doing is lowering your metabolism. And then when you start to add foods back in, you know, you lowered your metabolism, you probably lost, you know, some weight, some fat weight, some adipose tissue weight, but you also lost some muscle, especially if you weren't exercising in that time, which you might not have been doing because you didn't have the energy to do it because you weren't taking in as many calories. And so you lose that muscle. And then as you start to eat again, you're replacing that muscle with more adipose tissue, unless you were working out significantly. Um, and so that's why a lot of times people will lose weight on a diet and then they gain some back and then they gain the like extra two or three pounds. And at least from what I've witnessed, that is what I attribute that extra weight loss to and what I have read. Um, so my basic recommendations are to one, just write down everything you're eating or take pictures of it with your phone and just be cognizant of what you're, you're putting in your body. You know, as we get a few weeks out from surgery or a few months out from surgery or for years out, we can eat more, we have more, more tolerance for foods and that's a good thing, but then we can also develop, you know, new habits or maybe bring in some of those kind of old bad habits. And so just kind of being mindful and being aware of what you're, you're putting in your body, you know, it's easy to kind of grab an M&M here or eat like an extra little bite of food there. And so just being, being aware of that. The other thing is to have more fruits and veggies. I know it's really cliche as a dietitian to get on here and tell you to eat more fruits and veggies, but honest to goodness, guys, eat more produce, um, fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, steam it, cook it, roast it, bake it. I don't care. 
we're not getting enough of it. And so, you know, yes, protein is important, but it is not the end all be all. If you are more than six months out from surgery, even if you're more than really, you know, two to three months out from surgery, you know, it's not necessarily the, the only thing you need to focus on. And so a lot of times people will send me their, their food logs and they're just not eating enough fruits and veggies. You know, that's kind of the mainstay of, of your diet. It should be the foundation. Um, and then finally, really trying to increase your, your activity or change up your activity. You know, if you're constantly doing the same exercise routines or the same daily activities, whether it's in your garden or at work, you have to, to shake things up. You know, your body is going to once again adapt to whatever it is you're doing. So if you're doing the same thing every single day, it's going to adapt and be able to run its business and do its thing on a little bit amount of calories because that's what it's gotten used to. So you need to, you know, change the intensity up, change the resistance up, whether it's, uh, I'm a big fan of like putting ankle weights on or um, carrying hand weights if you're a big walker or runner. Uh, another thing you can do is, you know, change the incline on the treadmill. You know, there's all sorts of ideas I can give you for your specific, you know, activity slash exercise of choice if you need some help in that regard. So I hope this helps. I know this is a long one. It's a big tangent, um, but I think this is an area that is is very confusing and, and very frustrating. And once again, there's not an exact science to it, and we're learning more and more. And so it's it's kind of one of those things where you have to just sort of play with it and try one thing and, and try another thing. So, anyways, all right, hope that helps. Bye. Questions? We would love to hear from you in the comment section below. Tell us what else you want us to cover. And do not forget to share and like this video.